Hey guys, it's Lauren from Girly Knits, and today I am super excited to teach you how to make this super cute bra top. Now, this pattern is totally free. You can find the pattern on my blog at knittingisawesome.com slash how to knit a bra top. And there you will find the complete pattern and um, the materials you'll need and um, everything else you'll need to know to make this top. In this video, I'll be showing you step by step exactly how to make this. So I walk you through every step in the pattern. And this tutorial is really aimed more towards a beginner knitter because if you are if you followed a pattern before or you're intermediate or advanced, you know, you probably won't need the video tutorial because the pattern is pretty simple and straightforward for you to follow. But if you do get stuck at any point in the pattern, within the pattern I'll list you know where in the video exactly I do that step in case you get stuck and want to refer to the video you'll have that too and because this is such a basic pattern it's really easy to you know customize or make uniquely your own like if you wanted to add like a cool stitch pattern or you know vary the length of the ribbing or do like a special kind of ribbing or do something fun with the straps there's lots of places that you can customize this top and I can't wait to see what you do so make sure to share your projects on Ravelry you'll find the pattern page there where you can attach your projects. I'll also be hosting a knit along in uh, the forums. So if you find my um, group, it's called the Girly Knits Fan Club. There'll be a forum there where you could like share pictures and like your inspiration and what you're planning on doing or you can even ask me questions there and connect with other knitters who are making this too. So I really look forward to seeing how yours turns out and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is cast on for our bra top and you want to use a needle that's two sizes smaller than the needle that you needed to obtain the gauge. So because I'm using a size 7 needle for um, the top of my bra top for the bottom ribbing portion, I'm going to be casting on with a size 5 circular needle. And I'm just going to be using a long tail cast on to cast on my stitches. And if you're wondering how much um, yarn to leave, for your tail, a trick you can use is to take the total amount of stitches and times it by 0.5 because each stitch you cast on will take about um, half an inch of yarn and then you just want to add 10 inches on to that for um, your tail so you have an extra tail that you can weave in and it just gives you a little wiggle room so it won't be too short. So the first thing we want to do is make a slip knot. And then we just want to do a long tail cast on. Now we are going to cast on half the amount of stitches total and then we're going to place a marker to mark the side of the bra top and then we'll cast on um, the remainder and uh, place another marker for to mark the start of the round and that's going to divide the front from the back which will be useful when we get to the top of the bra top where we'll be doing increases and it'll also help us when we're um, binding off for the back of the bra top. So I will catch up with you after I've cast on all my stitches and I start um, joining the bra top to be worked in the round. Alright, so I've just cast on 62 stitches because I'm making the small size and then I've placed a marker and then I've cast on 62 more stitches uh, for a total of 124 and now I'm just going to add my start marker here and then we'll join this to work in the round. Um, little tip, cut straws work very well for stitch markers. They <laughs> are very uh, small and out of the way and um, yeah they're really perfect. I love using them. So okay so before we join we just want to make sure that our stitches aren't twisted and a good way to do that is to just make sure that um, the back part of all your stitches, that like braided part, is facing towards the center of the circle and that there's no twists or turns anywhere, so they're all facing inward. And then you just want your, your um, cast on tail there and then your working yarn here. And you just want to go ahead and start knitting in the round. Now um, the ribbing that you do is up to you. For this one I am going to do a knit one purl one rib as you see and I'm planning on making this seven inches long but you definitely have um, options and I'm going to show you a few of those so 
for the blue top I did here, um, this is actually five inches and you can see in the pictures what that looks like with the different lengths, um, you know, depending on how much coverage or how cropped you want it to be. And so for the blue one, I did a two by two ribbing, so knit two, purl two. And if you're following the pattern, you can definitely do knit two, purl two because all of the total cast on stitches are divisible by four, so that will work. Um, if you wanted to do like knit three, purl three, three by three thing, just make sure your cast on stitches are a multiple of six. I can't promise that they are, but they are divisible by four, so if you wanna do this option. And then you'll see with um, this purple top, so this is actually only three inches of ribbing for you know, a more crop top look, and I used um, a one by one rib here. So you have those options, and I will catch up with you after I have um, completed the ribbing for um, this bra top. All right, so I've just finished knitting my seven inches of ribbing, and I'm back at the start, and I'm ready to start knitting in the round um, in stockinette stitch to start the bust of this bra top. So what we want to do when we get to this point is we want to switch to our larger needle. So if you have two separate needles that you're using, um, you could just use that larger needle and knit across the stitches. If you have an interchangeable set like I do, then what you want to do is um, switch your right hand needle first. So we're just going to take off our size 5 and put on our size 7 needle. Make sure that's on there. And then it's going to be a little tight when you first um, try to shift the stitches down. So we're actually going to knit a whole round with the size 7 needle before switching our left hand needle because we don't want the stitches to be tight the whole time on this needle too. So we're just going to slip over that marker and then just knit across the round. So I just finished knitting my first round. So now what I want to do is um, you just want to make sure to remember to change out the left hand needle to put on your size 7. And at this point, all your stitches should have loosened up a little bit and uh, shouldn't be tight anymore. So now we're just going to knit uh, four more rounds, so a total of five rounds from when we started knitting. And then on the fifth round, you want to knit to the very last stitch before the start marker. And then we're going to start our increases. All right, so I've just knit my five rounds and I'm one stitch before the start marker. And again, if you ever forget where your start marker is, it's where um, your uh, tail of yarn is, where you started the cast on. Now we're about to start our increase round and I just wanna say, you know, you can make the increases however you like. We're basically going to be making two at each side of the bralette, so two at the start marker and two at the side marker. And the reason that we knit to one stitch before the marker is just so this, the increases are more together than they would be if we did one here, two at the side, and then one at the end. So it's a little just, you know, nitpicky thing, but I like how it looks better. And the increases that I'm going to show you are my favorite. Well, sometimes I switch my favorites, I'm going to be honest, but <laughs> this one um, makes a really invisible increase. And so um, I'm going to show it to you and feel free to, you know, do whatever increase you like. So before the last stitch, what we're going to do is make one right, and which is abbreviated M1R. So make one right is you're going to pick up the bar between these two stitches from the back, and then we're going to knit it. So this can be a little tricky because you need to stick your needle through um, the front of the stitch, it's a little awkward, but, and then just wrap it around, and it's knitted, and you've just increased one stitch. And then we're going to knit one, we're going to slip this marker, knit one again, and then we're going to make one left, and to make one left we're actually going to stick our left hand needle um, into this bar between the stitches through the front, and then we're going to knit it through the back loop. So we're going to stick our right hand needle through the back of that bar we just picked up, wrap it around, and knit it. And then again, we've just increased another stitch. And as you'll see, they're barely noticeable. And then we're just going to knit to the side marker, and we're basically going to do that again. So now I'm at my side marker. Again, I've knit to one stitch before the side marker. 
and we are going to make one right. So again, we're going to use our left hand needle to go between the bar and pick up through the back of the stitch. And then we are going to knit it. And then we're going to knit one, slip that marker, knit one, and then make one uh, left. So we're gonna stick our needle through the front of that bar and then knit it through the back loop. And then we're just going to continue knitting. So again, this is our um, sixth round of the bust portion of this bra top. And we're gonna be repeating this increase round every sixth round. And so again, after finishing this round, again, you wanna knit five more rounds. And then um, at the end of that fifth round, you want to knit to the very last stitch and then you'll start your increase round again. And so we're doing a total of three increase rounds. So in, for each round we're increasing four stitches, so it's a total of 12 increases total in case you want to make any modifications or anything like that. So I will catch up with you again after I have uh, made, finished all of my increase rounds. So I've just finished my three increase rounds and um, depending on which size you're making, um, I'm making the size small, but I do have a larger bust, so I decided to add three rounds. And you'll see in the instructions, you know, depending on the size or whether you have like a larger bust or if you just want a little more coverage, um, you may want to knit a few extra rounds because at this point we're going to be binding off for the back. And so the length that you have now is gonna be the length of the back of your bra top. So. Um, just keep that in mind and now we're ready to bind off for the back. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to knit four, two, three, four, and then as you'll see the, the first half of our stitches are going to become the back and then the last half of our stitches will be um, our cups. Okay, so we've just knit four and now we're going to bind off until we have three stitches left before the side marker. So, and then I also note there that you wanna bind off with kind of a firm tension because if you don't, then the back might be kind of floppy and you want it to be, you know, firm and secure and, you know, if it is floppy, you might, you know, need to add like an edging. You know, you could do a couple rounds of single crochet on the back, but if you wanna avoid having to do an edging, then you'll just wanna bind this off fairly tightly. Um, as you can see, if you like pull on it, you'll want it to just kind of, you know, have, you know, your knitting not um, stretch too much. So, so we're just going to continue to bind off until we have three stitches left on our left hand needle. Okay, so now we've just bound off for the back, as you see here, and we still have these front stitches and we are three stitches before the side marker and we still have one stitch on our right hand needle. And basically we're working the first um, row of the front of the bra top. And so we're gonna start with slip, slip, knit. So you're just slipping uh, one stitch and then the next. And then you're inserting your left hand needle into those two stitches. And then you're um, knitting those two together to decrease those two into one. And then we're just going to knit to the last three stitches of this row and decrease again, which I'll show you when we get there. So now I've just knit to the last three stitches and we just wanna end this row with uh, knit two together and then knit one. And now we'll be working um, the bra top back and forth. So we're gonna turn our work and purl across. And then we're basically going to be repeating that decrease row a few more times and the only difference is when you start the next row you're gonna do knit one slip slip knit instead of going right into the decrease because um, for that very first row we already had one stitch on our right hand needle but I'm sure you'll figure out that out just fine and I'm gonna catch up with you after we've um, done the three more decrease rounds and also just to note that you can remove these markers as you need them, we won't really need them on the sides anymore because eventually we'll be decreasing enough stitches that they'll have to move. So you can just go ahead and take those off. So now I've just finished a total of 
seven rows. I've done four decrease rows and three purl rows. And now we're just going to purl across the back side again, but this time um, to prep ourselves for um, dividing the cups, we're going to want to um, basically place a marker in the center of our knitting so the pattern will tell you exactly how many stitches to knit because I'm making this small um, and I have a total of 68 stitches right now. 68 divided by 2 is 34 so I'm going to purl 34, place my marker in the center and then purl another 34 so I'll be ready to um, start working one of the cups on the next row. So we are now ready to start working the wearer's left cup, which will be like the right um, cup if you're looking at your knitting. And basically we're going to be doing a decrease formula where we decrease at the underarm every right side row and then we decrease at the neckline every right side and wrong side row, so basically every row. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to knit one, again slip slip knit, and then we're just going to knit um, until we are three stitches before the marker. And now that we're three stitches before our center marker, we're going to knit two together and then knit one. Now, at this point, you have a couple options. If you're more advanced and you are comfortable with knitting the cups at the same time, and to do that, you would join a second ball of yarn and um, look at the instructions for the wearer's right cup and Basically, you'd be working like this row and back and then this row and back. If that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Because what we're going to do right here is, um, is just work this cup by itself and finish it and then come back and work this cup. But just an option in case you want to work them both at the same time. But for what we're doing, we're going to um, turn our work around and basically work this cup. So, as I said, we're going to decrease at... Um, the neckline every row, so we're going to start this row with purl one and then purl two together, which is basically the um, opposite of knit two together. It's going to look pretty on the edges. You will see they like lean the same way and look really nice. And then we're just going to purl to the end. And then we'll just be repeating those two decrease rows, the one we just did on the right side and this one on the wrong side, every row until we have six stitches left. And there's a note in the pattern for what to do if you, um, because you want to end on a right side row and what, how to handle it in case um, you don't end up on like the right row with the right amount of stitches. There's um, instructions for however you land because it will vary depending on which size you make. So, um, so just go ahead and repeat those two decrease rows until you have six stitches left, and then I'll catch up with you, you there to show you how to do the I-cord strap. So now we have our six stitches left, ending on a right side row. Um, and as you can see, the cup looks really pretty. The decreases make this really nice edge that you won't need any extra finishing for because it lays nice and flat. And um, now we're just going to work an I cord. And of course, if you want to do something different for the straps, you're totally welcome to. I like the look of the I cord because it has a nice, pretty finished look, and um, it's strong enough because it's like double layered, and it also um, will cover your bra straps nicely. So I'm a big fan. So what we're going to do first is just transfer these stitches to a size seven double pointed needle and you're going to need two um, double pointed needles to work an I cord so we have those there and we're always going to be working on the right side so we're basically going to take our tail and then we're just going to pull it tight and knit across um, our stitches so we're just going to pull that tight and knit and so Basically what we're doing is making a tube. It's almost like we're knitting in the round, but we're not um, actually like, you know, working from it like in the round like this. We're just taking um, our yarn and pulling it tightly um, every time we work um, our right side row. So basically we're just um, shifting the stitches back and forth as you'll see me do. So you finish one row and then slide the stitches to the top and then start knitting across again 
while pulling that tight. And then, so at first, um, the back might look a little bit funky. You might see kind of like, um, you know, like the long jogs of the yarn across the back. But um, once you get it going, if you just kind of give your knitting a tug, which I'll show you, um, you'll see that it turns into a nice little tube. So I'll just show you the back. So at first you can see, you know, you kind of see like the lines, but then if you just pull it like that, um, it will turn in, it'll be like pretty seamless and you won't see anything there at all. So yeah, you just want to continue an I cord for, um, I would say about 11 inches. It's just going to depend, you know, because everyone's torso is so different. So I would recommend maybe looking at um, a top that you own that's kind of similar and measuring the strap length for an estimation. And I would say it's always better to make it a little bit longer and then, you know, take off um, some rows in case it's too long as opposed to not having it long enough because then, you know, you have to like, because you're going to have to trim your yarn. So then if it's too short, you'll have to like tie more yarn on again, which gets kind of messy. So I'd say if anything, give yourself a little extra length and then you can always adjust it when you are um, finishing your top. So now I've knit about 11 inches, which is the strap length that I want. So I'm just going to um, bind off these last stitches. And then we are going to cut our yarn. And you just want to leave, in case this is the perfect length of strap for you, you just want to leave, you know, a few inches. So that you can use that to seam the strap to the back of the bra top when we get to that point. So I'm just gonna pull that through. And then now we are going to go back to knitting the other cup. So um, as you see, these stitches were just held on our circular needle until we're ready to knit them. And um, we wanna work the first row starting on the right side. So it'll basically be at the center of the bralette. And you're going to join a ball of yarn. And again, you just wanna like leave a few inches there when you're starting. And then again with this um, cup, we're going to be decreasing every row at the neckline and every right side row at the underarm. So we're gonna start with knit one and then um, just hold that there so it doesn't slip out. And then slip, slip, knit. And then we are going to knit to the last three stitches where, where we'll then uh, knit two together and then knit one. So now we're at the last three stitches and then we're just going to knit two together, knit one. Then again, we're going to, going to turn our work and then purl across to the last three stitches. And then so at the last three stitches, we want to do the opposite of slip, slip, knit, which is slip, slip, purl. So it's going to be slip one twice and then put those stitches back on your left hand needle. And then we want to purl those two stitches together through the back loop. So your needle is going to go around to the back of those two stitches, purl them together and then purl one. And then we're just going to be repeating those last two decrease rows again until we have six stitches left and ending on um, at the end of a right side row. And then we're going to knit the I cord straps just as we did um, for the other cup. And then I'll catch up with you after we've finished um, both uh, straps. And at that point, you're ready to just attach them to your bra top and weave in some ends and then you'll be all finished. So the final step is to attach the straps to the back of your bra top and I would recommend just using a couple safety pins to pin the straps down. Now, you know, if you're not going to be wearing a bra under this, the placement might not be, you know, super critical. You just want to make sure, you know, they're both the same distance from like the underarm so it's even and all that. But if you're like me and you want to wear a bra under it, you might want to try it on with a bra and make sure the straps align with your bra and they're in the right place and then 
um, you know, once you've adjusted the length as needed and have them in the correct spot, um, you just want to pin them down. And then a little trick that I use is once you have um, where you would like the strap and you want to sew it on, but it's kind of awkward having this pin here, um, my advice would just be to grab this guy and then just move it down a few rows. So if you just mark those three stitches, then you'll know um, where you want to place your strap and then you can grab your strap, of course, and kind of play with it, make sure that, you know, the back portion is in the back and everything lines up. And then you just kind of want to put like the wrong sides together. So like this, and then use your tapestry needle and um, just sew the strap to the bind off row on the back. And you might want to do it a couple times. You might have to fuss with it a little, but um, ultimately, you know, it should um, look nice and pretty. So however <laughs> you can accomplish that. And um, as for the ends, um, I found that if you take this end and just kind of weave it across the center and up the side with your tapestry needle, it'll create this nice finish. You don't need to like tie anything down. It will look nice and pretty. And then as for your start, you know, you just want to weave it in along one of these ribbing lines here, and then um, that will look nice as well. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that your bra top turned out super cute. Um, if you would like more tutorials like this, like let me know what you want to learn. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can post them um, in the forum on Ravelry. And thanks for watching. Bye!